Let me start with why I got interested in writing about it. Uh, I was directing a bioethics centre in Australia and we were contacted by doctors who had ethical dilemmas. They were working in uh, neonatal intensive care units, intensive care units for very small children, and they had uh, conditions, which, for example, uh, spina bifida, in which, uh, in their view, it was not really a good thing for these babies to survive. Um, the babies, if they did survive, would need multiple operations, uh, would be severely disabled uh, in various ways, and uh, often the parents also thought that, given the description of the condition, it was not going to be a good thing for the babies to survive. So these babies were essentially being not treated, and the result of being not treated was that they mostly died before they were six months old. Almost all of them died before they were six months old. Some of them died in the first week or two, some in the first month or two, and others gradually throughout that first six months. Uh, and this was a very draining experience for the parents, the doctors, the nurses. You had these small uh, babies in the hospital but not being treated in order to, uh, to make them live, um, but nevertheless living for quite a long time. And the doctor said, you know, are we doing the right thing here? Is this justifiable? So we, my colleague uh, Helga Kuzer and I looked at it and we decided that, yes, it was a reasonable decision for the parents and doctors to make that it was better that infants with this condition should not live, uh, at least with the more severe variants of this condition, should not live. But we couldn't defend the idea that the right thing to do then was to let them die. Um, this seemed slow and painful and, as I said, uh, terribly emotionally draining on uh, their parents and others. So we said, look, the difficult decision is whether you want this infant to live or not. Um, that should be a decision for the parents and doctors to make on the basis of the fullest possible information about what the condition is. But once you've made that decision, it should be permissible to make sure that baby dies swiftly and humanely, if, if that's your decision. If your decision is that it's better that the child should not live, it should be possible to ensure that the child dies swiftly and humanely. Uh, and so that's what we, that's what we proposed. Now, um, that's been picked up by a, a variety of opponents, both pro-life movement people and uh, people in the militant disability movement, which, which incidentally didn't really exist at the time we, wrote, uh, we first wrote about this issue. Uh, and they've taken us as, um, you know, the stalking horse, the, uh, the bogeyman, if you like, um, uh, because we're up out front in saying that we think this is how we should treat these infants. Uh, I can understand to some extent why the pro-life movement takes us that way, but I think the uh, disability movement ought to be just as upset about letting children die because they have a disability. And since that's a very common practice in many hospitals, I'm not so sure why they've gone after us in particular, rather than after the doctors who are actually doing it. Uh, because I really don't see the difference between letting the children die and making sure that their death comes swiftly and humanely. Mm -hmm.